Grayson Warfare was released on 30th of April in early access and has since then bound thousands of players exploring the Lemang Island. While Grayson had a difficult start suffering with severe server performance issues, Madfinger Games worked hard and launched several hotfixes and a first official patch which addressed over 200 issues. Hi, my name is Cynthia and in this video I want to look at the current state of the game, recapture on recent added patch 1 and give an outlook of what has been announced to be added in 2024 during the last community briefing to give you an opinion if Grayson Warfare is worth a play. First up, let's have a look into the current state and the issues that troubled the game, especially in the beginning. Since release, I play Grayson Warfare daily and enjoy the game a lot. For me, it very well combines the itch of PvP and PvE in an open world without loading time between the raids in a beautiful looking game and let's be real, the game looks really, really good. Like in every other game, also Grayson Warfare has its flaws that need to be addressed, I'm sure will be addressed by the developer team soon. Let's talk about some of the issues that were problematic, especially after launch and start with the server performance. While Grayson Warfare had a difficult start with performance issues as low FPS, severe rubber banding, crashes and long loading queues, a lot of improvements have been made. Latest after the introduction of patch number 1, but also before I recognized increased FPS using a 3080 myself, little to no game crashes anymore, barely any loading queues and a lot less rubber banding. Do not get me wrong, there is still improvement needed, but at the current state of playing Grayson Warfare, purely looking at these aspects, it is for me very much enjoyable. And yes, a reduction of the overall player population will have an effect as well, but the developer team clearly did some of their homeworks. One issue that is crucial for any FPS game is the hit registration of players and AI. While the hit registration in Grayson Warfare feels to me most of the time quite good, there are times where it seems to back out and hits do not seem to do anything to the enemy. To put this into perspective, the shown footage were two occasions that made the issue very evident. This does not happen extremely often, but is in my experience an issue that happens from time to time and needs improvement which I am sure will be addressed with the ongoing optimizations announced by the developer team. Helicopter waiting time and LZ camping. These are two areas that concern the community a lot with the current state of the game. The helicopter system works in a way that maximum four helicopters can be in the air at the same time. Additionally, you cannot see where a helicopter is heading unless it's already on its way, which leads to players flying to the same LZ occupying two or more helicopters. This is causing that many players are waiting for several minutes to be able to even call a helicopter. After that, depending on the pickup location, players will have to wait several minutes for the helicopter to arrive until they are able to take the flight to the destination, which takes some time itself. Madfinger already addressed plans for these two issues in their latest briefing and I will go into it later this week. Last but not least, another big point is the AI behavior, meaning how the AI spots enemies and the accuracy, especially over long distances. While in the PvE VP game like GZW, it is important to keep a good balance between the difficulty of the PvE aspects and enabling PvP. The way how the AI is aggroing just seems very unusual as shooting one AI with a silence gun from far distance most of the time still engages all other AI in the vicinity with all of them knowing immediately where the shots came from. The second aspect is the accuracy, especially over long distance. In the current state, it happens very often that enemies one-tap you over 100 meters of distance with a simple iron sight AK without even aiming animation. This just seems to be off and gives the feeling of RNG while fighting AI. This area is also known to the devs and was addressed in their second community briefing and I will also go over it later. Coming to the improvements that have already been realized, Patch 1 went live on the 22nd of May 2024 and addressed over 200 issues. A hotfix to resolve side effects was launched just two days later. The update brought fixes and changes on gameplay mechanics, user interface, audio, animation effects, network and loading, as well as game environment. The summary of all the changes, including the hotfix made, you can find on the screen as well as in the description below. Now you might ask yourself, how does it go on? Just recently, one of the community managers, Devil Dark Gamer, released a community briefing on the future plans for the next couple of patches. I personally think that Madfinger Games does a great job on the communication where other game studios can definitely learn from. Devil Dark Gamer started the briefing with the point that server and performance optimization is one of the top priorities for Madfinger Games and they added several servers for South America and also other regions like Oceania to manage the load and the capacity demand already. They will keep on working for the next updates to improve the game performance even further Further, and this will be a constant effort. In regard to the AI behavior, he announced that the AI is currently subject to change as it is understood that the current behavior is unusual and the accuracy and tracking will be adapted. This requires some time. Nevertheless, he mentioned also that the AI is not supposed to be easy and will over time and progress with the GZW game development 
get smarter and harder. He then went into the helicopter waiting time and LZ camping issue and announced that they are working on this and have plans to adjust it. While just adding helicopters to decrease the waiting time is not as easy as it sounds due to performance impact, they have new approaches to limit the waiting time and show players the destinations of the individual choppers. In regards to the LZ camping, it was mentioned that it is planned to add more LZs to the different POIs to counter the camping. At last, Devil Dark answered some of the community questions and gave an outlook for the big update later this year. Besides some very nice quality of life additions like toggling some movement mechanics, for example leaning, that the community is asking for, I think the most interesting and exciting statement was that they plan to add more attachments like lasers and flashlights with the first big update later in 2024 that will also bring day and night cycle to the game. Another very neat planned feature was announced that allows players to drag or carry out their mates into safe area if they fell into coma during combat. This will add some nice portion of realism to the game which I, which I really like. Apart from that, Devil Dark Gamer mentioned that deleting in-game messages, auto-sorting the locker as well as crafting and more variety of loot at the POIs is planned. As you can see, there are a lot of exciting things coming up to praise on Warfare still in 2024. Now, what does that mean for the current state of the game and the question, is it worth it to check Raze on Warfare out? I personally think Madfinger Games did a lot of things right in the last four weeks, especially on improving the server and game performance. With this usually being the biggest struggle for any game to be enjoyable, playing the game now is a lot more fun than it was four weeks ago. Now, looking at the changes, especially in terms of AI behavior that are planned and the promising additions like the day and night cycle, I think yes, starting or returning to Grayzone Warfare is worth it as the laid out roadmap is very promising and the game as it is right now is surely not easy but a lot of fun. I hope I could give you a good overview on the current state of the game and what is still planned per current available information. If you liked the video then please hit that like and subscribe button as I'm uploading Grayzone Warfare content on a regular basis and it helps me out a lot to grow my channel. I also stream 3 times a week on Twitch so if you have questions on the game or you just want to chat I'd love to see you during one of the streams. Thank Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon on Lemang Island.